Judah was the people of God. Thank you, son. And vast armies was coming against Jehoshaphat and the people of Judah. I've discovered that we have to learn how to praise God through our storms. Sometimes life can get so dark and dismal that we even contemplate giving up. Have you ever been there? Life can show up so so hard on you that you just want to throw in the towel. And if you haven't been there like many of us have, reach that point yet, just keep on living. And praising God because that day is surely on the way. Life will just show up out of nowhere and bring calamity and destructive scenarios that will make us just want to give up. There's no escape from it, but there is a solution to that situation. There's a way to handle the adversities of life without stressing out to the point of throwing in the towel and saying enough is enough. The first thing we need to do is on the screen. We need to seek the face of God. Yes, Have I got a witness here? Yes. When the distressful, distasteful, distracting mama rose, disappointing, dreadful, and depressing times show up in your life, the first thing we need to do is seek God's face. I can't hear nobody. Jeremiah says, seek the Lord while he is near. Here in our text this morning, it's going to bless your life. Jehoshaphat, he has been told that there is a vast army coming to destroy him and the people of Judah. Y'all do know that Judah means praise. Have I got a witness here? I would that you understand that your praise is under attack. Your praise is under an assault. Because the enemy knows when you praise God, some wonderful things happen. Have you ever been in a real praise and saw people get delivered and, and healed and set free by the atmosphere of praise? Sometimes, glory to God, sometimes I can't even wait to get to the house of God just to get involved in the praise. See, because I've been reading the word all week long. I don't need a preacher to push me to praise God because on Monday I've been praising God. Tuesday, I've been praising God. So by the time Sunday come, I don't need anyone to help me praise God. I'm in overdrive. Have I got a witness here? The Bible is clear that when we praise God, it steals, little Kenny, the avenger. Now, these vast armies were the men of Ammonites and the Moabites and the Meonites. It's critical to see this because they had all came together to attack the people of God, the Ammonites, the Moabites, and the, the Meunites came to attack God's people. Have you ever been there, beloved, when folk try to team up on you to get at you to destroy you? Nobody ever been there? They team up and get in their little cliques and talk about you to destroy your character and sabotage your witness. But I served the devil notice this morning that no weapon. <laughs> formed against you shall be able to prosper. Man, if y'all help me preach, I get through this real fast. Grab your neighbor, tell him, neighbor, no matter how many people come against me, I will still be standing after the dust settle. Come on, give God praise if you know that's right. <laughs> ah, it's going to get good. So, Jehoshaphat knew that he did not have enough power to deal with such a vast army. And you got to get to the place to understand that you can't handle everything. Amen. There's some things that, glory to God, that may come against you that you need some help from God. Am I right about it? Amen. When people come against you and team up and demise and connive and undermine your anointing, amen, you need the power of God to move on your behalf. Yeah, it's, it's, it's critical to see this because now this caused Jehoshaphat to cause a, or, or, or call a, a national fast. 
This was customary uh, with a Hebrew king to proclaim a fast in perilous times. So Jehoshaphat, little kitty, he knew that he and his people had to seek God. Can I get about 10 people to say amen? amen. Look at the screen. This is all that bless you if you are a word uh, um, learner. It's on the screen. He says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, seek my face, turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. And the people of God says, amen. I wish I could deal with that particular scripture. There's so much um, word in there. We could talk about that for the uh, um, rest of our lives. But when you get in a place where you know you can't handle situations, you got to humble yourself and pray. Jehoshaphat knew that he needed to seek God's face because what was coming against him, he couldn't handle by himself. So Jehoshaphat, he goes to the temple, and the Bible says in the middle of the courtyard, he goes to pray and seek the face of God. He goes to pray and seek the face of God for himself. And that's a good place right there to preach because there are going to be times when you don't have anybody to go in for you. Yeah, you have to learn how to pray and find God and seek God on your own. You have to have your own relationship with God Almighty. The Bible is clear that you have a personal relationship with Christ. I can't get problems solved with grandmama's God. I have to learn how to seek God for myself. So as he prays to God, he exalts God, and he gives his name some praise. Oh, Oh, bless his name. That's a good thing when you're praying to God. The first thing you ought to do when you open up your prayer is give God some praise. Exalt him for his mighty acts and how good he's been to you. And begin to worship him in your prayer before you give him a petition. Give God some praise. God, I love you. I, I, I thank God for what, what you've been doing in my life. And God will incline his ear to your mouth. Watch this here and watch this. Give you the ability to know that he hears your prayers. So now after Jehoshaphat was done praying, the spirit of God came on a Levite by the name of Jehazi a prophet and he informs watch this Jehoshaphat that everything was all right yeah in other words don't worry about it that's good news for somebody this morning I found out that one thing about God that when he informs you that everything is going to be all right he will send someone else with the same message Come on, say amen. I'm going somewhere. Um, he will tell you first and then send someone to you with the confirmation. See, if you've been with God all week, whatever I preach, he ought to tell you again through your man of God. Uh, glory to God. That's why that Nita pointed at Kia because God already told that Nita what I told her this morning. God will always send you confirmation. And I come to tell about 50 of y'all, if you can shout, if you're not too embarrassed, and if your neighbor don't shout, I don't want you to talk to him for the rest of the year. I come to tell you that everything is all right. <laughs> everything don't have to be all right to be all right. Look at one more neighbor because they ain't excited enough. Tell them everything is all right. Um, I know it looks bad, but it's all right. I know you don't feel good about it, but it's all right. I know the bill's stacked up high, but it's all right. I know your body don't feel that well, but it's all right. I know they talked about you like a dog, but it's all right. I know right now you're going crazy, but it's all right. I think you get on your feet, throw your hands in the air, open your mouth and tell that devil, throw your best shot, but it's all right. <laughs> Come on, I got a feeling that everything... Yeah, it's going to be all right. Uh, come on, wrap your arms around your neighbor. Say, neighbor, uh, just in case you're going through, I got a word for you. Shout everything. You ain't got the right neighbor. Tell them everything. Still ain't got the right neighbor. Tell them everything is all right. Now open your mouth and shout like it's all right. Yeah. Everything is all right. <laughs> Um, I feel preaching in here. I said everything. Come on, touch your road. Tell them everything. Come on, everything. 
Yeah. That thing that you thought was not going to work, God says, I'm going to fix it. Everything going to be all right. Look at somebody tell them, my business is all right. Yeah, it looks like it's going down. It looks like I'm going to get the loan. It just looked that way. But I got a word for you, weeping night. Endure for a night, but everything is going to be all right. I need you to shake yourself one time and tell them, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right everything. It's going to be all right. I'm not feeling it right now, Pastor. But you don't have to feel it. It's not a feeling, it's a fact. Everything about me is all right. In other words, lean on your neighbor, say, don't cry for me. I'm good. You ain't got to feel sorry for me, baby. And, and, and guess what? I don't even need you to pray for me. I can pray for myself. I don't need you to pray for me. Jehoshaphat went to the courtyard and prayed for himself. The Ammonites, the Moabites, the Meonites, they're coming all together to attack the people of God. But Jehazel gave Jehoshaphat the word, the prophet. Don't you worry. Stop tripping. They ain't going to take you out. I got a word from the Lord. All them coming against you ain't going to work. Everything is all right. Don't, don't, don't listen. Don't fret. Don't worry. Don't fight back. I'm getting ahead of myself. Don't, don't do anything but just wait on God. We're going to see it. It's going to bless you. Jehazel, he said to King Jehoshaphat, he says, don't worry. Don't, don't be afraid. Don't even be discouraged because what you see, watch this, watch this, it's not really what's going on. Y'all remember, in other words, last week, don't respond to what you see. Just hang on to what you heard. The prophet said, it's going to be all right. You see them coming against you, but don't worry. Don't worry what you see. Hold on to what you heard. Because the prophet said everything is going to be all right. I know you see them coming together to try to destroy you, but don't respond to what you see. Hang on to what you heard. The prophet told your host of that everything is all right. You're going to see it in a minute. He says, he says don't, don't let the numbers frighten you. Get the picture now. Watch this. The Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Meonites was all coming together to come against King Jehoshaphat and the people of God, which is Judah. They was coming against the king and coming against praise. But Jehazel comes to the king and said, listen, don't trip. I got a word for you. Everything is all right. Have I got a witness here? Don't, don't trip. Don't worry. Uh, uh, because everything is, is going to be all right. Because if God before you, who? Here's what I want to tell y'all. Stop worrying about people talking behind your back. God going to bless you in front of their face. I'm almost ahead of myself. I wanted to preach right there. I, I, I ain't worried about what you say in me behind dark corners. Because what don't come out in the dark will come out in the light. But I ain't going to be mad at you. I'm going to let my success revenge. You're going to see it in a minute. Uh, look, 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 look at verse 15, New Living Translation. He said, listen, all you people of, of Judah and Jerusalem. He said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, this is what the Lord says. Do not be afraid. Don't be discouraged by this mighty army for the battle. <laughs> it's not yours. But God's. And can people say amen? Man, I wish I had enough voice to preach this. Y'all took my voice early. Uh, now, I know the armies are great. Uh, uh, I know the bills are due. I know your body is in pain. But keep this in mind. Here's the promise. Y'all ready to shout? Here's the shout. Uh, I, I can't tell you there's a shout and don't unpack it. Y'all ready for the shout? Uh, uh, I know the army is great. I know the bills are, 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 are high. I know your body is, is hurt, but here's the promise. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. Y'all miss y'all cue the shout. 
I, I, I know the bills I do. I, I, I know the children driving you crazy. I, I know your body's in pain, but here's your shout. The battle is not yours, but it's the Lord's. I wish you give God praise right now that the battle is the Lord's. Yeah, so, so I just come to encourage somebody this morning and tell you that the battle is not yours, but is the Lord's. Don't you flinch, baby. Don't you fret. Don't you worry. Don't you even back down. I got everything under control. The Lord told me to tell you, I've got your back. Y'all cry. Uh, look what the text says. It says in chapter 20, 16 to 17, New Living Translation. Watch what it says. He says, tomorrow. Uh, stop right there. Don't even move. Keep it on the screen. I got a word for you. By this time tomorrow. Y'all y'all not helping me. Uh, y'all quiet. Still ain't missed your shelf. You wait for next year. I said by this time tomorrow. Watch this. He says march against them. Quiet for a minute, son. He says you will find them coming up through the ascent of Ziz at the end of the valley that opens into the wilderness of Jeriel. Watch this. Keep it going. But you will not even need to fight. Keep it right there. He says, tomorrow, I know all these jokers coming on you. I know you fearful. I know you scared. But tomorrow, I want you to go down there and you won't even need to fight. He says, I want you, when you get there, he says, take your positions and then stand still. And watch the Lord's victory. Ho, 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 wait a minute. I want you tomorrow to go to the field where all these armies are that you're afraid of. And when you get there, I want you to take position and stand still. For it is the Lord's victory. Watch this. Get this. He is with who? You. Oh, people of Judah and Jerusalem. Do not be afraid. Or discouraged. Go against them tomorrow. Go out against them tomorrow. For the Lord is with you. And the people of God says amen. amen. What's this? What's this? Now, 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 that's a short word. You may be seated. I know you want to shout. The shout is coming. I promise you the shout is coming. I promise you the shout is coming. He says, tomorrow. Shout tomorrow. Y'all still ain't shout like I thought you was going to shout. Look at your name and prophesy. Say, by this time tomorrow. Every devil that came up against you, God going to shut their mouth, shut them down, and they going to have to serve you. Oh, y'all not getting this. Look at your other neighbor. Say, neighbor, by this time tomorrow, here's your place to shout. In 24 hours, every devil that came against you got to bow down before you because no weapon formed against you. Yeah, 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 y'all don't see it yet. Y'all still don't see it yet. Oh, go type three people, tell them about them all, about them all, about them all. Yeah. And the good thing is, you ain't gonna have to do nothing about them all, but stand still and watch God work. Y'all not saying nothing here. Look at your neighbor and say, God about to do something. God about, God about to do something. So he says, he says, I want you, I want you to march down against them, hear me, and stand firm. In other words, listen, Jamila. He says, when you get down there, I don't want you to move. Don't fight. Don't run. Just stand still. Uh, some of y'all right now ought to stand on your foot, flat footed. I want you to practice for tomorrow. When you wake up in the morning, I want you to get out your bed, and I just want you to get on both feet and just stand still. Uh, watch this. is going to bless your life, I promise you. Uh, 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 uh. For the battle is the Lord's. Whisper that to somebody so they can really get it. Please tell them the battle is the Lord's. In other words, it's all in his hands. <laughs> man, man, when, when you got faith in Jehovah, you know it's all in his hands. You, you, you're going to see it. And, and, and be seated. Here, here, here's the tension in the text. Here's the tension. When I preach, I always look for the tension in the text, Christian. Here's the tension. I often ask the Lord, why, Lord Kenny, uh, God, if you're going to take care of the enemy, 
Watch this, son. Here's the tension. Why do I even have to show up to the battle tomorrow? I mean, God, you're going to take care of them. You're going to kill them. You're going to shut them up. You're going to silence them. Why do I even have to go down there tomorrow? Let me run that by you again. God, if you already going to take care of the battle, if you're going to kill those ninjas, why in the ham fat do I got to show up to the battle tomorrow? I mean, if you're going to take care of them, why do I got to show up? Now, the spirit of the living God spoke this to me, and he said, I need you to show up because I want you to see me take your enemies out. I can't hear nobody. I want you to see me go to work. Y'all cry. God told me to tell 25 of y'all, if you can shout that this reset season, watch me go to work. Y'all cry. Y'all not saying nothing here. Grab your neighbor and say, neighbor, watch God go to work. I'm going to let you see me shut your enemies down. Yeah, that's why I need you to show up. I want you to show up. I don't want you to run. I don't want you to fight. I don't want you to move. I want you to stand still and watch me go to work. High five about three people and tell your neighbor, neighbor, God is about to go to work on your behalf. You don't have to fight for the battle is not yours. Yeah. He said, I'm going to shut their mouth in your presence. I'm going to shut up their plan in your presence. I'm going to shut every enemy in your presence. Now, now this brings me to my last point. Uh, the first point he did, I know I can shout and go home, but I got to give you the rest of the message. And y'all going to have to help me shout because I ain't got enough voice to shout. Uh, 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 you don't have to show up. I mean, when you show up, you don't have to fight. I just want you to watch me go to work. Oh, oh, here, 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 here's my, here's my next shout for my back row church. I promise y'all, if they don't shout with y'all, you don't need them in your life. This season going to be a season of sweatless victories. I ain't got the right church. I ain't got the right church. I'm a win with no sweat. I ain't got the hustle no more. I need a little bit more. No more voicemail, man. I ain't got the hustle no more. All I got to do is show up. Y'all cry. Y'all not saying nothing here. Tell somebody, sweat this victory is. It's my portion. Glory to God. Uh, woo. Uh, touch three people. Tell them, don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Don't sweat it. Uh, just watch God work. Come on, say amen. Uh, tell somebody, God is working on something. Uh, and I can't wait uh, um, until tomorrow. Uh, I'm going to stand still and see the salvation of Almighty, Almighty God. So, so, so number one, uh, Jehoshaphat, he, he sought the face of God. Number one, seek the face of God. And I got to get out of here. I wanted to shout right there, but y'all ain't shout good enough for me. I needed somebody to break loose over that sweatless victory. So now I got to teach. Let me give you one more chance. This is a season of sweatless victories. You shouldn't let old prophecies drown you out. It's just a reminder it's still coming. Y'all quiet here. I said a season of sweatless victories. Oh, here, it, here it is. I'm going to give y'all one word and here's for my anointed church uh, um, that you got anointing ears. Here's for my anointed ear church. I'm going to give you one word and I want you to shout and receive it because the way you receive it and respond to it is how fast it's going to come to you. I'm going to give you one word. He says when you show up tomorrow, I don't want you to do nothing because I'm going to fight for you and that equates to one word, easy. <laughs> He says, take up my yoke, for my yoke is y'all quiet here. And my burdens are light. Oh, God, my burdens are open your mouth and shout, it's gonna be easy. Yes, Lord. I feel you, Melvin. That's okay. Keep on working with me. I feel you. I'm grab somebody and tell them it's gonna be easy. Uh, tell them one more time, it's gonna be easy. Everything God says is gonna be easy. 
Um, the text says that the next morning, King Jehoshaphat and his men, they gets into place. Um, he had his singers and the men with their instruments to go to the front of the line. Grab somebody, tell them you got to send Judah first. Um, you got to send praise first. Have I got one witness? And as the army began to march, King Jehoshaphat gave the signal for the singers and the men to start playing their instruments. Wait on me. You have to see this because the Levites, um, they led the battle. They led with the instruments and singing. That's why it's very important that the praise team be on point uh, with their worship because it leads in battle. Um, it's very critical. Not only do the praise team show up, but you show up, watch this, and be participatory in the worship experience, so when time the word come, it won't be hard for me to preach. <laughs> um, grab somebody, tell them, neighbor, send Judah first. Uh, the Bible is clear. Uh, watch this. The Bible is very very relevant when it deals with praise and worship. Psalm 136 1 is on the screen. It says, oh give thanks unto the Lord for he is good for his mercy endureth forever. Uh, grab somebody tell them it's the mercies of God. Why I'm not consumed. The Bible says they began praising God. And as the enemy kept marching, they kept right on singing and playing the instruments and praising Almighty God. And the text says all of a sudden, the soldiers from the enemy start fighting each other and begin to kill each other. I come to tell you that praises confuses the enemy. Shake somebody by the hand and tell them, neighbor, your praise confuses the enemy. Shout hallelujah. I stop by to tell somebody, you don't have to wear it. God is already fighting your battle. The Bible says as they continue killing themselves, the praise team kept on praising God. And before I take my seat today, I have to admit that sometimes I get a little discouraged. Sometimes I feel like giving up. But every now and then, I have to look up to the hills from which cometh my help and give God praise in the middle of my battle. Seek somebody for the last time and tell them neighbor my praise is my weapon I dare you get up on your feet now and open your mouth and give God some glory and give God some praise David said I will bless the Lord at all time his praises shall continually be in my mouth I got the clothes here, but is there anybody here ever been down in a battle, but you decided to lift up holy hands, and all of a sudden power be down in your soul, shout hallelujah, grab somebody for the last time, grab them by the hand, and tell them neighbor, you don't know like I know, how strong my praise is. That's why I'm hollering. That's why I'm shouting. That's why I'm praising. Look where he brought me from. He brought me from a mighty long way. Open your mouth and shout it. Yeah. Shout it. Yeah. Shout it. Yeah. He's good. My praise is my weapon. When they started praising God, one part of the choir says, for the Lord is good. And the other part of the choir was singing, his mercy endure forever. And the scripture says, as they was praising and singing, for the Lord is good, his mercy endure forever. The Ammonites, the Moabites, and the Meonites ambushed each other and killed each other while they were praising God. Your praise is your weapon. 
weapon. So actually, they didn't do nothing. They just did what they do. They didn't do anything different. When they showed up, they did what they do. They praised God. He said, go there and stand still. Just do you. And they praised Andy Bush. Dad, do what you do. If you ain't a praiser, you don't have no power. It's in the scripture. When they praise God, it's sin ambush. Enemies started killing each other. Confuse the enemy. See, praise gives the devil, watch this, a sense of victory on your behalf. They start getting up, giving up. How in the world you still hanging on with all this hell you going through? You still praising God. It backs the devil up. I can't keep messing with her because she going to praise God anyway. Your, your praise, listen, the devil is, he's, he's attacking your praise. Because your praise is when God come in and do your work. When you praise God, God got to come in and get the work. Yes, he comes yeah. down in your praise. Yeah. But notice it wasn't in their dance. They had to say something. That song that I wrote is what they say. That's a song. The songs, the songs are songs. They were singing. Had to come out their mouth. For the Lord is good. And his mercy endure forever. So all you coming at me, for the Lord is good. His mercy endure forever. And the enemy like, I'm about to attack them. But they still praising what's going on. They got confused and started killing. Listen, God told me to tell you. When you stand still tomorrow and you start singing praises to him. He going to let you see your enemies kill their own dreams. He going to shut their mouth in your presence. He going to let you see him shut their mouth. And you know who your enemies are. And the sad thing, here it is, some of your enemies are in church. No, let me back that up. Let me back that up. Let me back that up. When you cantankerous, you're not even in the church. Oh, Jesus said, upon this rock, I build my church. People who go to church don't mean you're in the church. When you're in the church, there's a way you live. Some people go, but you're not really in the church. You can't be mean and be in the church. You just go to a building and quote the scriptures that the church quote. Meanness can't be in the church. You're not part of the church when you're mean. Upon this rock, I build my church. Some folks say, well, you know, you got nasty stuff in the church. No, there's no nasty stuff in the church. You can't even get in the church when you're nasty. You go to the building, but you're not in the church. Upon this rock, I build my church. Nothing that's not like Christ is in this church. You're not in the church. So we got to stop the way we talk. People backstab in the church. They don't. You can't be in the church and backstab. You just go to a building. You're outside of the church backstabbing, hoping that it will get in us. If you're a gossiper, you're not in the church. See, we teach it wrong. We teach it wrong. Get yourself together and get in the church. We don't go to church. And then we make everybody inclusive. If you ain't doing the right thing, you're not in the church. Because the gates of hell will not prevail against the church. Hell can't be in the church. You just ain't in it. You're not in the church. You're around it. You know what the church do. You look like it. But you can't talk about your sister behind their back and say you in the church. You ain't in the church. You go to church. You know about the church. You read about the church. But hell can't come in the church. Because it ain't my church or your church. It's his church. And he won't let it in. So you ain't in the church if you're mean as hell. Because hell cannot prevail. Repent, get your behind together, and get in the church and stop hanging around the church. You can sing good, but don't be in the church. 
You can be a great preacher and be outside the church. And we get blessed by your preaching, but you are cast away. You ain't in the church. You're around it. Anything can't get in the church. They wouldn't let Paul in the church. Because he was a killer. They wouldn't let him in until Barnabas came and vouched for him. You can't get in the church. We don't want you here. You can't get in. Barnabas had to go vouch for him. He's no longer persecuting Paul. Saul, he's praying Paul. You can't persecute the church and be in it. The apostle Paul that wrote a third of the New Testament, they wouldn't let him in the church. Until he got himself together and they had somebody named, a person named Barnabas. Y'all remember? That vouched for him. They said, now he can come in. Because you ain't going to bring that hell in the church. You can come. To the building. And the building ain't the church. We the church. Some of y'all right now ain't in the church. Because you don't think you've done anything wrong. That keeps you out of the church. You need to repent and humble yourself. That's how you get in the church. You got to humble yourself. Repent. You can't get in the church haughty like you know everything. You got to sit down, get low. He said, take up my yoke for I am lowly, I am meek. You can't be high than the chief cornerstone. Some of you still ain't in the church. You just go and quote scriptures. You have the you have the you have the form of godliness, but you deny the power thereof because you still mean as hell. The true church don't have hell in it, but we combine them. Oh, it's backstabbers in the church. No, I got to stop preaching that. Ain't no backstabbing in, in the church. You ain't in it. Love abides in the church. They will know you, my disciples, by your love for each other. If you ain't got that, you on the outside of the church. In the church. That's the question. That's the question. Not the building. Here's your prophecy. We won't be here long. With your money or without. Whether you leave or don't. It's already a wrap. It's sealed before the foundation of the world. I'm already locked and loaded to get it. And I had nothing to do with it. I just inherited it. So you could ride or die. Just keep stepping. No matter. Look at your neighbor and say, God got your replacement if you don't want to be here. Go hang on the outside somewhere else. Who want to get back in the church? You got to repent first. From your pride, your ego, your Gnosticism, your arts, your behavior. I'm not saying, watch this, that you got to be perfect. But you think you all right. I'm cool with it. You cool with being outside the church? Because he died for the church, not people outside of it. No, he died for the world, but you got to come into the church. You got to receive Jesus Christ. Then you get into the church. Then you do kingdom. Twelve oh five, good time. I did a pretty good job today. Declare this with me. I am in the church. I repent for every ill thing I thought, said, or done to anything or anybody. Forgive me, Lord. Today, I confess I'm wrong. But right now, make me a new creature. Bring me back in the church that you will be glorified. 
in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Welcome back. Now act right before you get put out. Says the Lord. Not me, it ain't my church. If I don't act right, he can put my behind out. Let me start tripping. <laughs> what a revelation, huh? Uh, well, don't let me lose your confidence. By this time tomorrow, stand still. Sing a song of praise. And your enemy gonna kill themselves. Because my praise is my weapon. Some of y'all don't believe that, do you? One of, some of your enemies are, is your emotions. You looking out. You know what? Your greatest enemy is in you. You see? Some of you looking at, okay, who messing with me? No, you messing with you. You your worst enemy. Listen, man. If people would have done to me what I've done to myself, let me run it by you again. If people would have done to me what I've done to myself, I would kill them. So some of y'all looking tomorrow that, you know, people, you know, that, that talk about you going to die. You silly. You need to kill your pride. So by tomorrow, when you praise God in sincerity, your pride going to die. Your pride going to kill your depression. Your enemies in you going to kill each other tomorrow. Y'all ain't get it. You got several enemies in you. Anger, anxiety, depression, loneliness, complacency, jealousy, envy, gossip. Y'all not gossip. They going to kill each other by this time tomorrow. So you can be free to handle your outside enemies. Because your outside enemies are already handled. God says I'm going to prepare the table for them. You got some enemies on the inside that's coming together. Watch this. Ah, hear me. They coming together to attack your praise. Remember, the Judah was praise. All the enemies came to attack. Your enemies in you coming to attack your praise. That's why you got to be pumped to praise. The Bible says, enter his gates. When you come in here, you ought to come in here shouting and happy. That you made it in here. Y'all ready to give? Look at your neighbor and say, my weapon is my praise. The devil's attacking your praise. Girl, when you praise God, come here, come here, come here. When you praise God like that today, that dance, that radical dance, that radical dance that you praise God like that, just initiate a praise all by yourself. Let the weight of God's glory be shined upon you. You are a daughter in this church. Everything you touch, I pray it prosper. Watch this. Watch this. Because I saw your praise and he saw it. God says, you don't have to wait till tomorrow. Yours is right now. Hey. Right now. Right. There it is. Right, right. That, right, right now. Right. Come on. Come on. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. Catch him, please, baby. I can. Go ahead and get it, girl. Right now. Who want that right now, blessing? But throw your hands back and say, God, give me mine right now. I don't want to wait till tomorrow. Receive. Yes, Lord. You can say what you want. I heard God say that. Everything ain't for everybody. Sometimes you got to do something different. God recognized her praise. Kids said, bump that. I'm coming out.
Ain't no way in the world the devil can look at her and say she defeated. Not dancing like that. Not dancing like that. Get it, girl. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Where my batch of marble people at? Do I got it? Oh, y'all say, bump that batch of marble. I need mine now. Come on up this altar. Come on, run up to this altar real quick. Give me some more, Bill, but I don't keep they scream. It don't matter. I let, yeah, give me. Come on, some more. A little bit more. There you go, baby. Right there. Don't move. Right there. Good girl. Hey. Go ahead and dance then. Like yours are right now. Say, my devils are killed right now. My devils are killed right now. Throw your hand back and say, sin and bushnick. Sin and bushnick. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, my enemy killing each other right now. Low self-esteem, dead. Y'all not helping me here. Dead. Dead. I feel good about me today. Dead. I look good. I feel good. Dead. Come on, somebody. Give the Lord some praise and let that devil know my devils are ambushed. Hey, shout. Give God glory. Hey, shout. Give God praise. Hey, shout! Give God glory! Ah! Go to three people and tell them my devil just got killed. Yeah. They just got killed. They got ambushed. I need some dancers that will. Every devil, dead, dead, devil, dead, devil, let it go! Look at that devil! Say, devil, you can't stop me now! You got to die today, right now. Ambush, ambush, ambush. My praise is my weapon. Upset your road. Glory to God, I know. We ain't took up an offering yet, but here's my praise offering, God. Everything belongs to you. Shout glory. Fuck! 
come against you. You're going to get that nail miracle today. It's coming out. And everything that's been in, God said, I'm going to release you by the power of God. When I lay my hands on you, I want your praise to be a weapon. And I want you to destroy everything that's in your family. Everything on your house. Oh, shut up. Go on, give God praise.
I just heard the Holy Ghost. If y'all don't move over this one, God is doing, watch this. He's doing quick elevations. Watch this. Watch this. They just got elevated a deacon. But when I told a licensed minister to dance, it took a deacon to come and out dance him. And that let me know. Now you just got elevated to an MIT. Go shout. Y'all quiet. Y'all need to shout. Y'all need to shout. Y'all need to shout. Y'all need to. Y'all need to shout. You a preacher, boy. You a preacher. Hey, good God Almighty. Dance with him, y'all. Get it. Now you get it. Now you get him and lead him. Elevation is in our church. God does a quick work. Your faithfulness has elevated you. Lift up your hands. Watch this. Shh. Lift up your hands. Tell somebody now it's official. He is a deacon, but uh, watch this. He attends already in my team without even being one because he just want to learn. God today made it official. Watch this. Because of his praise. God elevates you because if you can't praise him on the level you're on, you definitely ain't going to praise him on your next level because the higher you get, shh, the higher you get, the spirit of ego get on you. Did you not know that titles bring ego? But when you can serve God without a title, God will take you higher. Stand him up. He's a preacher. The Lord says, watch this, lift up your hands. No more bow down back. Man, you got to stand up like you've been doing. Right? You've been faithful over a few things. And then rise up. I'm going to now make you ruler over many. God did a quick work in you. And some people are going to be like, well, it should have took him this long. No, you and him ain't the same. MIT, preacher. Pastor in your own house. I see pastoral leadership in your house the way you treat your family. You just stay put. Now what you do is go back and feed the sheep. I call pastoral leadership, but I ain't called you pastor. But you keep acting where you're acting because I see it on you. You don't have to run, jeep, jump, and holler and scream like I be to be a pastor. You just got to have a heart for the sheep. And you go feed them people every week. God giving you training. With feeding sheep that can't pay you back. That's what pastoral leadership is all about. Before I even thought about pastoral, I was on them streets every week, three or four times a week. Elevation in our house. Play something soft. We're done shouting. We want to worship God now for who he is. Lift up your hands. Turn me down just a little bit, son. Thank you, Melvin. You're doing such a great job, son. That's right, hold his arms up. He earns and hers. God slowly taking you up to the mountain so you can see greater things. Your faithfulness got you where you are. They called me the other day. He said, he said, Pastor, every first and third Saturday, I got the brothers in the recovery house. You ain't got to pick them up. I got them every first and third. That type of willingness to serve elevates you every time. He wasn't looking for nothing. I didn't know about this day. I'm just led by the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost don't have time. 
What took you five years may take somebody five hours. Because when it's your turn, it's your turn. But praise reveals that God is in this place. When you guys were praising, it was authentic. It wasn't no show. You ain't got nothing to prove to nobody. God showed up. And he spoke to me concerning elevation. How many know y'all? How many can, can testify and be a witness that this is a good candidate? Yes, sir. Yes, 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 yes. You know, I ain't in the flesh. I don't need him. I'm not doing this to keep him. If he leave next week, that'll be on him. I'm being obedient to the Lord. But we take this family, move back to Philly tomorrow. I said, God, thank you. I'm hurt, but he got to go. I don't need no title back. I ain't giving him a title. I'm giving him a mantle. He's my son. And you ain't got to stop calling me dad. You hear me? Don't stop calling me dad. My faults don't never disqualify me from being your dad. Get that? All your experiences that you've been through got you here today. Basketball, team player, positions, all that is going to help you devise what God needs you to do. Now you can rest in it. It ain't even emotional. It's a fact. You're called to preach the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. You started out right. You came in humble. You served. You got trained and volunteered everywhere you can go. You're a son. I can trust you with my wife. Lift up your hands to God be the glory. For the great things that he has done.